Hello and welcome back to the Dice Matrix. My name is Eric Tarver. Thank you for joining me today. We will be discussing uh, Yamatai. This is the second video in my series. Uh, the first one was Introduction and Setup. This one is How to Play. And the third one will be discussing the particulars uh, and in a closer look of the specialist tiles and the fleet tiles. I thank you so much for watching today. So let's just go ahead and jump right to the video, How to Play Yamatai. Uh, I have the game set up in front of me, and um, I just want to go over real quickly uh, the player boards. So after everybody's got their player board selected their color, um, I'll throw a flashboard up of it here. Um, I'm giving demonstration of the old wise man, and um, at the bottom of his picture, you will see there's five coins pointing to a beautiful one inside like a, an emerald green square, but that's the sign for victory points, or in this game, it's actually prestige points. So um, it's just a reminder at the end of the game when scoring that for every five coins you have, you will get an additional prestige point. Okay, you see the five steps, one, two, three, four, five on the board. Let's move to the first step. This symbol here basically is a reminder that the first thing that you do is you grab a fleet tile, which are uh, one of these cards, but they'll be face up. You can only grab one of the face up ones. And a couple of things are going on on this. You have um, uh, the, the type of uh, boat you'll collect, like this one will give you a bamboo and a um, stone. And then it has a special ability that says you can destroy any two boats uh, on the board. And then it has an initiative number for next round. So after everybody's done, uh, with their complete turns uh, co collectively the whole round end that you will take your meeple and put it on that number on the shell track and that will show in line where you go the next game uh, which is a pretty interesting thing so the highest number uh, like for example here the number 10 is the most powerful because you can get it gives you uh, two rare ones and then uh, this says you can pick one of anything so you can get a gold and gold's hard to get uh, gold chips so anyway um, but you go dead last for sure on your next turn uh, because it's a 10 below it. So anyway, that first step is just reminding you to select your fleet tile. And then, you know, the second step uh, shows you that you'll be, uh, is the trade one. Okay, so you can see the, the little thing swirling down the, to the change here. And it shows you that you can buy or sell. You can only do one sales transaction, so you can either buy a boat, uh, not a gold, there's an X underneath it, so you can't buy or sell unless you get a special power later that lets you do that. But, uh, so let's say you want to buy um, a stone boat, it'll cost you three coins. You want to sell a clay boat, which is the red one, it'll, uh, you'll get four coins for it. But you cannot do multiple transactions unless you have a specialist that lets you break that rule. Um, so that's the trading phase. So you select uh, your tile phase in the first step, and the second step here, you trade. Brings us up to uh, the third step, which is actually placing your little boats out in the line. So you have your little uh, boats, and then you lay them out somewhere. Now, you don't have to. That's an option to have. But if you do do it, then um, you have to um, uh, make a choice of what you do. So step three is placing your boats, but it's actually divided into two sections. There's the up section, um, which I'll show here, that... Uh, you place your boats out, and if you do, the little arrow pointing down, you have to do one of the two things. You either have to build a structure, a building, you'll either build one of your own buildings, um, or um, if it's if applicable, or you will um, collect the culture tokens around where you laid boats uh, that turn. Uh, but when you build a building, it's a little different. You don't have to have to build a building, you don't have to have then the personal one who placed it out, all you need is the empty island with the right supply ships around it, and then you can have it built there, like you commanded those ships to build it. Um, so that's kind of a nice little advantage, and that's determined by, of course, the, the structure tiles that have the, the building cost on them. So like right here, just a little reminder. I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself. I was just trying to break the player mat, but anyway, this is the first little step. So um, the second half of uh, the step three, which is uh, you know the playing the ships out, it shows you if you do play a building, these are like how you're scoring points. So if you happen to play a, one of your building next to one of the prestige buildings, uh, which are either the temples or the uh, the Tories, then you will gain a prestige point. You will take one of these little tokens over here, which is like this guy right here, but it shows you um, in the little picture, so I really didn't have to do that. <laughs> so um, anyway, if you if you happen to build a, a, a standard building on uh, a mountain, then you'll get a prestige point. If you build a standard building on a mountain, and for every uh, you know red thing that it's connected to, you also get the, that many prestige points. 
So you can actually get a few if you position just right and have the right timing. Um, the last thing is getting coins. If you place a building, a standard building, and it's not, um, if it's part of a chain now, like if you just play one by itself, it's nothing. But if you have uh, two or more that are adjacent, you get to count all those buildings that are adjacent to each other, and you get a coin for each one. And if you happen to build the temple card, like this is if this is the particular building that you're that you built up, then it says times two. You will actually get two coins for each one of those. So if you have so if that's a third consecutive building you built next to them, then you will have um, you will get six coins instead of the uh, the, the three coins. Um, and the adjacentness is um, basically pretty simple. Uh, like these are the lines. If you have anything connected, like a buildings on the either side uh, that you that shares a line, then it's adjacent. But if you don't share uh, like a dotted kind of C line, then it's not adjacent. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, so that brings us to step four. At step four, any unused boats are dropped off at that little anchor symbol. That anchor symbol can hold one ship. Any in excess have to slide over to where you see the two minus one. Uh, that shows you that those ships are gone. So you can hold one ship over till the next turn if you didn't use it. But anything that's in excess of that, um, will be counted against you at the end of the game. So for every two ships at the end of the game that are in that pile, um, you'll get minus one point. And that's basically to kind of uh, keep people from hoarding ships, I guess, to keep other ships from other people. Um, or maybe sometimes if they rush the game to the end. I guess there's different logic for that. But it makes sense. You don't want somebody just continually just racking up ships and uh, not paying a penalty for it or, or not getting it through a special power. Okay, that's pretty simple how that is. Uh, number five, the step five is the culture. If you happen to have culture tokens, if you have two culture tokens that are the same and um, or three of any kind, uh, different ones, you can trade it in to get one of the, the specialist tiles. And the specialists uh, all have different abilities on them. Like this one in particular lets you do an extra trade transaction. So you not only can like sell one thing you can sell two things or you can buy two things or you can sell one thing and buy and buy one thing so it lets you do an additional trade transaction with that but almost every power is very cool with the specialists and um, that is the simple five steps to play the game and um, you just can go and go and go until one of the end conditions is met um, basically running out of either specialists or structures or running out of all of one color of a ship when you go back to your, your uh, a refreshment uh, phase uh, like supplying all the stuff okay so now let's go down to the board just to show you a little bit more in uh, detail of how like laying the ships out basically works okay, so here we got our little game going and I'm just gonna walk you through a sample one turn I won't get into every little specific of um, every detail although I do tend to ramble so I may give more than I normally uh, say that I wouldn't <laughs> but in this case I'm playing the orange player and this is kind of a little game in progress not really because I didn't put I just threw a few ships out there or whatnot the first thing you do is you look on the track to see who's next and apparently in an earlier turn orange which was me um, had played the two tile which means that I go in this position uh, they had played the five tile and they had played the eight tile so therefore this is the order we go in left to right so the first thing I do is I check my board and I go hey I get to choose a fleet tile so you would choose a fleet tile which you'll get boats and then probably a special ability to go with it till the end of your turn um, and then you'll get your initiative for the next turn. So let's just say I wanted to go here to collect a bunch of ships. I don't maybe need these many ships, but I just want to take it because I want to block its ability because I will collect a clay ship, which is a red. I will collect a, <laughs> sorry about the glare here, I have to look myself, a brown ship, which is wood, and a white ship with a question mark, which means anything, which is a gold. So just for fun, I will collect a gold and uh, the, the red and then the brown. So I previously, in my harbor, had a clay ship, so that can also be added to it. So I have these ships here. So you put your little meeple on this guy to remind uh, you of what tile that you've taken, and then you take all your little ships. Now, of course, you'll study the board to figure out the best patterns to where you want to go, but just for you know being expeditious, I will just show you something, a couple things you can do. So the next thing you'll do is you'll move down to the trade. You can go to... Uh, you go to number two, and you don't have to do this, but you can buy or sell ships. So you can buy or sell based upon the cost. So if I wanted to buy or sell a green, a bamboo ship, it'll be one. A wood will be two. Uh, I'll get If I sell a black ship, a stone ship, it'll be three. If I buy or sell a red ship, it'll be 
uh, four coins. And so you can only do one transaction a turn. So you can't buy and sell um, unless you have a, a, a special guy that breaks the rules, which there is one person that does do that, which is nice. So um, anyway, so you've done this. So you select your fleet fl tile, then you trade. And let's just, hey, you know what, let's just go ahead and just buy a, a green ship just because I like to. So they only cost one. So I'll, I'll buy a one of these bamboo ships. I'll get my change on my board. And now look at all these ships I got going on here. I got the three plus the one to help my harbor. I can lay some ships out, which brings us to step three, which is playing out your ships. So, you know, I play out my ships and you don't have to do that, but that's what you really need to do in this game. Um, and if you do play ships, you have to take one of the two actions here, either build a building or collect culture tokens. So let's just randomly uh, show you how you can kind of do this here. So to play ships, you have to find an empty spot which there's one here, somebody had already started there, one there, there's somebody had started there, only played one ship, and then there's one here. So like I can take my ships and let's just say start an empty point and then I'll just like lay them all out here in whatever order or fashion I want as long as they're on those little dots, you know. I don't know if this is the actual path I would take, but let's just say it was because I chose that way. So now I can do one of two things. I can either now, well I have to, do one of the two things. I have to either build a structure, a building, or I have to collect culture tokens. And I don't have any islands. To build a building, you need to have empty spaces somewhere on the board. Um, there's one over here, but it doesn't qualify. But anyway, let's just say I want to collect culture tokens, and then I'll get back to the other. So for every ship that you play out, now I could have cut up through here if I wanted to, you choose one ship adjacent to that area, and you say that ship is claiming that culture token. So I'm like, oh, I'll take that one there. Uh, the second clay ship will take that one there. This one's uh, no, can't take anything. This gold one, oh, he'll take uh, this one here on the mountain. And this green, last green one I played, will take this one over here. So I'll get all these culture tokens, which are really cool. Okay, so that would uh, uh, be my play if I entered that. And then at the fourth play, I will come back to the build buildings on that uh, decisions. I would have any excess ships, I would place them in my harbor here. I can keep one. Anything over that, let's say I had a green ship left over, I didn't, but let's just say I decided not to play one of my ships. Let's say I decided to keep, you know, I'm like, okay, well, then it's there. If I had any more in excess from that, I'd have to choose which one I'm keeping, and then they would slide over into this area. And for every two ships at the end of the game that are in this area here, you will get minus one prestige points, which are victory points in this game. So, and then the fifth phase is you will purchase if you would if you would like to with culture tokens and you can do that with the ones you just got and to do that you either need two of the same or three of any kind so of course i, I have at least three there's two that are the same so that's more efficient so i can cash these in on step five and look up here and say hey which one do i want to get they all have different abilities and i will run over the abilities in the third video exactly but this one's a pretty cool one i can cat if i have a gold ship i can cash in a gold ship on my turn for any two ships of my choice and this one actually does the opposite i can take any two ships and then cash it in for a gold ship which is very nice but it can't be another gold you know you can't say oh i'm gonna you know cash this ship in for two gold ships so it's anything but gold um this one has an ability that lets you take one of your culture tokens and sell it for four coins but anyway there's a bunch of different ones but i kind of like this one where i can take any two ships and also on the bottom are prestige points he's also worth two victory points at the end of the game so i'd purchase him and that would end my turn and then the next person would go but let's go back to step three instead of placing culture tokens let's say if i had let's say the board was already like empty here and i wanted to see well i would see do do any are there any spots on the on the board even if there was a spot over here that somebody hadn't used, like let's say the ship wasn't here and there was a red, red, green. There's not a red, red, green, but if there was one, a building that cost that, I could take one of my buildings and put it there. But I do have a red, red, green over here as well. Do I have anything that has these? No, but let's just say, what is something over there? Let's just say this one was a black one instead, a stone ship. Okay, so let's just say after I place it out, even though I didn't place that ship, I placed these ships. Well, I still get to activate that. I can command these ships to uh, give those supplies to this area, which is two clay and one stone. And the two clay and one stone, I said, hey, I'm building this building. So I take it and place it face down. And then I put one of my buildings up there. And uh, then if that qualified for anything, I would check to see if I got any bonus points for it. Because 
Uh, once you place a, a standard building, which is yours, you would say, is it next to one of the special red buildings? It is not. That would have gave me an extra prestige point. Is it, was it built on a mountain? It was not. But if I had built a building here, then I would have got a prestige point, which is a victory point in the game. And okay, none of those. Is it a part of a chain? No, it's by itself. It's not part of a chain. But let's just say I had a building previously somehow here and I built one here or vice versa. Now I have two in the chain by placing that building, it would activate and I would get two coins. If it had been three, three coins, so on and so forth. There's other buildings like this temple that give you bonuses that multiply that. If the building you had built was this guy, then you would have got double the coins. So instead of two, I would have got four. Um, and if you happen to build one of these special buildings out here, um, like this temple, you would have placed that instead if you had the, the proper buildings around it. Now remember, you don't have to have been the one who laid the ships there because some people could have just been coming through here collecting a bunch of cultures and then you look back and go, wait, look at this. Somebody had set up something and they don't even realize that that ship now qualifies for something and you're like, huh, I'm, I'm activating those ships and then you can build that building. So that's a, that's a pretty nice way to score some points. But basically, that's the steps. You grab a fleet tile, then you can trade by buying or selling. You place your ships. If you place a ship, you have to either build a structure or collect tokens. And then if you build a standard structure, not the red one, but if you build the other ones, you will check to see if you gain coins or prestige points. And then you put any excess, uh, one excess ship in your harbor. Any beyond the add access will go into the negative point zone. And then you can buy uh, special power people. And then at the end of the turn, you would look at your spot and go, hey, all right, everybody turn their cards back in. I was at 10, so he would go here. And whatever tiles that these guys took, let's say one took the six, one took the nine. This guy would be on the six, they go on the nine. And then what you do is you replenish. So you'll take your fleet tiles here and you'll start shuffling them up. And then you'll shuffle these down from the upper area. If you weren't sure how these got here, you can watch my setup video before this. And then you'll shuffle these three fleet tiles that were taken in a three player game. Oh, so you don't reveal them, sorry. Keep <laughs> those face down. And the one I took, of course, let's just pretend I shuffled it back in there. And then these will be revealed up for the next turn to choose from, adding new ships to the area to choose from. Any that were missing here, you will reveal new buildings. And a good thing to do is to put these little, to remind, you know, those are out there that they'll take that instead of a standard building. So now there's another building out here. And anything that was up here for the replenishment, any specialist that was not chosen, you will take a two coin and add two coins to them to make them more tempting for other people. And then you will replenish this up here. And then there'll be a new guy in play or a gal. And everybody will continue to take turns until one of the end conditions is met which is either running out of one color of one of the ships, which, you know, at the end of the turn, excuse me, at the end of the complete round, or you can know you run out of tiles to replenish here, or you run out of specialist tiles here. So building tiles, specialist tiles, or boats, if you run out of those, triggers the uh, in-game condition, and then you add up your points. You get one point for every five coins you have at the end of the game, you get uh, the points off your buildings in the top right here, and you also get points off of your uh, specialists. And you add them up, and whoever has the most is the winner of the game. And that's how you play um, Yamatai. Hey guys, so that's Yamatai. There's one thing that I forgot to mention, um, as I'm good at doing, I uh, get all excited talking about the game. Um, when you're placing out your ships, you can come in at the entry points, as I showed an empty place there. But if there's not a place to go, or if you don't want to, you can also continue a path that someone else has started and place ships off of it in any direction. But the only rule is you can't use any colored ship that uh, that you want. You have to choose. Sorry about that. That was a good burrito today. That's a whole different. It's a whole different game itself. Burp the burrito. Um, <laughs> but you have to use a ship that was previously the color that you're playing off of. So like if you see a line going up and you want to play off of one of those ships, you have to, like if it was a red ship, you have to start your new line with that red ship. Or if it, maybe you followed it further, their path was red, and then there was another one that it ended in black, you want to continue that path, you have to start yours with a black ship. So um, that's another way to place ships out different routes to get to different culture tokens or to different islands. 
um, to get proper ships around it if you want. But that's the rule I forgot to mention. I do want to say that I thought that Yamatai was a solid 8 out of 10 for me, maybe an 8.5. I don't know, the more I'm kind of diddling with it, the more I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it has uh, the same creators as Five Tribes. Uh, it's not Five Tribes at all, but it's got the same kind of vibe a little bit. Instead of the gens, you've got the specialists that have powers, except for their uh, their powers are up all the time. You know, you don't have to continue to pay for them like you do in Five Tribes, which I like a lot. Um, some of the tiles are a little bit more different. I'm going to get in the third video after this. We'll talk about the closer look where I'm going to talk about the fleet tiles and all the fleet tiles, all their abilities special abilities and all the abilities of the specialist. But um, I want to say that I have really enjoyed Yamatai. I highly recommend you playing it. I wish you could play more players. It only plays two to four. The two player game is very interesting, very uh, similar to the five tribe mechanic where you control, you take two turns a piece instead of one turn a piece. Um, I can't say much more about it. Excellent production uh, from Days of Wonder. Uh, yeah. I like it. Highly enjoy it. Thank you as always for watching the Dice Matrix. My name is Eric Tarver, and uh, we'll see you next time. Keep the dice rolling.